can turn a day at the beach into a very painful experience, stinging jellyfish. Just brush up against one and you may end up with a burning welt. Jellyfish have been around for hundreds of millions of years, predating sharks and even dinosaurs. But scientists are only now beginning to understand how to protect us from their toxic sting. Bob McEwen reports. Pelagia colorata, a purple striped jellyfish with uncommon beauty, grace, and one nasty sting. I was out there, you know, trying to catch a wave, and then all of a sudden, bang, just got stung real quick. Earlier this summer, a swarm of these tentacle tears invaded the coast of Southern California, leaving behind a wake of skin rashes, welts, and swelling. We had 229 stings that we treated in the month of June. We've had uh, around 100 uh, over this uh, past three, four days. Experts guess that warm water, changing currents, and an increase of nutrients may all contribute to jellyfish blooms like the one in California or this one just off the Gulf Coast of Alabama last month. But it's a phenomenon that remains a scientific mystery. Nobody has a clear idea why that's happening, whether it's a temperature thing or, or nutrients or whatever. It's hard to say. Besides the purple stripe nuisances, other late summer swimming hazards include the sea now and the Portuguese man of war. Their potent stings can produce burns, skin lesions, and sometimes life-threatening allergic reactions. I know what they look like now. I see them, I run. But they're nothing compared to the deadly box jellyfish found in Australian waters. Its venom is more lethal than that of a cobra. Fortunately, while most jellyfish have stinging tentacles, the majority aren't powerful enough to penetrate human skin. The sting is used for capturing food, and so uh, most of them are capturing very small things. And they're good at it, too. Although they're made of 95% water and a flimsy mixture of collagen and proteins, Jellyfish are efficient predators, feeding on plankton, small crustaceans, even each other. And they do this without the, the aid of a brain, without eyes for the most part, without hard structures like teeth and bones. The key to their hunting prowess is in specialized stinging cells, often thousands of them, located mainly in the tentacles. Upon contact with these cells, tiny harpoon-like structures called nematocysts shoot out at hair trigger speeds to puncture, immobilize, or inject toxins into prey. They have to be very venomous and capture things very quickly, whereas some of the same things that they eat could actually rip holes in their body and kill them. For researchers eager to learn more about this gelatinous and poisonous life, advanced technology is helping them to understand a whole new world down the deepest realms. Scientists from the Monterey Bay Aquarium Research Institute in California use remotely operated submersibles to explore places that humans can't go. Just a few miles off Monterey Bay is a 12,000 foot undersea canyon where they can observe and collect samples of unique life forms, most of which appear to be jelly-like. On one single dive, I think we've found at least eight new species that nobody had ever seen before. Like the Siphonophore Praia, this long, stringy jellyfish relative has been measured to over 130 feet long the longest animal on Earth. You're looking at something with over 500 stomachs. It is definitely an important predator, and there are lots of them down there. Luckily, it's only about the diameter of a broomstick. And it's not a threat to beachgoers. But for those that are, one Israeli scientist has developed what may be the perfect summertime accessory, sunscreen with jellyfish repellent. It contains chemicals from one type of fish that's naturally immune to jellyfish toxins. And if it works outside the lab, people, for the first time, will be protected from these beautiful but menacing creatures.